Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we are looking at how to be wise uh, in relationships with others. And we've been hanging out in James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. If you've got your Bible, maybe you want to turn there. And if you missed yesterday's program, I would encourage you to go to our website, hopeisheretoday.org. That's hopeisheretoday.org. Check out that 14-minute program. It was sharing six characteristics of a person who is wise in relationships. And the first one is, if I'm wise, I won't compromise my integrity. And we talked about it. It's not just about having integrity with obeying the Ten Commandments, okay, in Exodus chapter 20, but it's also in the little things like being a people pleaser and telling somebody you'll come to something and, and not showing up. And, you know, even though you know up front you don't want to, you can't go because your schedule is on overload, and yet we want you want to be a people pleaser. And I confessed yesterday that I am a fellow people pleaser and how God's trying to grow me in that area of just saying, I'm sorry I can't do that, but invite me again. Or just saying, I'm sorry I can't do that right now. Uh, or sometimes you just have to say no. So I uh, encourage you to check that out. That was the first thing we shared yesterday on the program about if I want to be wise in relationships, I won't compromise my integrity. And we want to be wise in relationships with both the big and little things. The second thing is, if I want to be wise in relationships, if I'm wise, I won't antagonize your anger. <laughs> oh, man. If I'm wise, I won't antagonize your anger. Ever had anyone that just kind of pushes your buttons because they knew it would bother you and uh, they, they wanted to get your blood pressure up a little? Uh, don't elbow the person next to you, all right? Yeah, we, we've all been there and we've done that before, knowing how we could push somebody's buttons and antagonize them. But, you know, as I think about, you know, what kind of causes arguments in relationships, uh, you know, there's lots of reasons, but three of the main ones I've seen in my life uh, is, number one, uh, when we play that old compare game, Secondly, when we're very condemning, when we're you know in relationship, a conversation with somebody, and we're condemning with them. And the third thing, when we're contradicting, you know, we say one thing and we do another thing. And we talked about at the end of yesterday's program that we want to be like Jesus, uh, chapter 5, verse 37, where he said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And, you know, we need to be paying a little more attention to that and not be contradicting with things. You know, saying, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> oh, friends, we want to be people of integrity and we don't want to antagonize others by comparing, condemning, and contradicting with our words. A third thing, if we want to be wise in relationships, if I'm going to be wise, I won't minimize your feelings. If I'm wise, I won't minimize your feelings. You know, friends, one of the things I've seen with people, uh, you know, we're all wired up differently. I mean, sometimes we're more similar in some of our friends' personalities and their makeup and the way they handle things. But an area that I've found a lot of difference that sometimes can cause strife in relationships is over grief. Over grief. And one of the things I have found now doing ministry since 2001 is that you know, people grieve differently. Some people like to talk about it. Uh, they like to talk through the grief. Uh, some like to just process it internally. Some like to process it quickly. Others, it takes quite a while. Some, they shed tears all the time, those first few months and year. Others rarely or never cry. And I just want to encourage you today uh, to grieve the way you need to grieve. If you need to have a good cry, do that. God gave us tears to release the pain in our hearts. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, the great result is we get to love people. God gave us capacity to do that. But a lot of times when you lose someone or a job, okay, it could be a loved one. It could be a spouse. It could be a child. It could be a friend, a coworker. You could lose a job, lose a pet. Um, you know, you start to lose your your your. One of your five senses, vision, your hearing, um, your health. Uh, you know, there is a time to grieve. And I want to encourage you to allow yourself to grieve. And especially for the guys out there listening, it's okay to shed some tears and cry. 
Release that pain. That's what God gave us those tears for. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4 says, Kind words bring life, but cruel words can crush your spirit. Ouch. You know, friends, it's so true. You know, saying we were kids, sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never hurt me. That's a lie, friends. That is a lie. We know that. You know, you can forgive, but sometimes it's hard to forget. And I just want to encourage you today to really be wise with the words that you use. And don't minimize people's feelings, especially if they're hurting or grieving. There's a time to maybe down the road say, hey, you know, I think you've really been in grief a long time. I want to encourage you maybe to see a Christian counselor. Um, but allow people to have space and time to grieve. And don't try to rush people through their grief. Because wisdom in relationships is considered. It's always considered. And I want to encourage you to err on the side of grace. Now, if you really want to know something um, you know, about a situation and you ask somebody, okay, you need to give them a fair space, a fair opportunity to speak the truth and love to you, knowing that it might not be something you want to hear, but if you know they love you about it, um, then you need to receive that wisdom. But I want to encourage you, if you're on the other end of that question, to be considered with how you share the wisdom. A fourth way, if we're going to have wisdom in relationships, is if I'm wise, I won't criticize your suggestions. If I'm wise, I won't criticize your suggestions. James chapter 3, verse 17 says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is submissive. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15 says, A fool thinks he needs no advice, but a wise man listens to others. You know, friends, when I'm trying to make major decisions, I love to get input from four or five different people, different backgrounds. The only common thread that I have is that they're followers of Jesus, male, female, and different personality makeups, different backgrounds, vocationally, personality-wise, because I want to look at something from all angles and want to get wisdom from them. Uh, sometimes when you make mistakes in decision-making, it's when you do it isolated and don't allow others to have input. Now, I know there's a fine line. Sometimes it can get really challenging when you get too many people involved when you're making a decision. And at the end of the day, you have to make decisions that impact your one and only life. But I always think it's wisdom to talk with other people and get suggestions and just listen to people, whether you agree with it or not, and get some good suggestions. I love this quote by Rick Warren. He says, you've heard that it is wise to learn from experience but it is wiser to learn from the experience of others. Man, that's so good. You've heard that it's wise to learn from experience, but it is wiser to learn from the experience of others. And you know, if you want to have wisdom, wisdom is submissive. In other words, just listen to the other person. Just listen to them. You know, it's kind of interesting, God gave us two ears and one mouth. I mean, maybe we should listen twice as much as we speak and i want to encourage you to you know keep moving forward keep moving forward because that's what god wants you to do today a fifth thing if we're going to have wisdom in relationships is if i'm wise i won't emphasize your mistakes Woo! somebody need to hear that that's listening or watching today on our youtube channel I want to remind you we have a YouTube channel and most of our programs are on there. So just go to YouTube and uh, type in Hope is Here and my name, Greg Horn, H-O-R-N. Hope you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you enjoy one of the programs, leave a comment. It just helps people find us easier when they're searching for Hope is Here. We would greatly appreciate it. But if I'm wise and I won't emphasize your mistakes, James chapter 3, verse 17 says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is full of mercy. Anybody else besides me need a little mercy today? A little grace in your life? Yeah, we all do, don't we, friends? And I want to remind you, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9 says, Love forgets mistakes. Nagging about them parts the best of friends. Oh, friends. Who is today that you just need to kind of give them a break? Uh, we all got friends, family that, you know, sometimes we kind of dread seeing their number because we know they're going to be critical or negative. And it's easy to get that way. 
And maybe uh, the Holy Spirit's kind of convicting you as I'm saying that. Maybe you need to ask a friend or family member, say, have I kind of got into having that Debbie Downer attitude and kind of singing gloom, despair, and agony on me and looking at the glass as half empty instead of half full? And friends, it's easy to get there. I've been there. And yet, I want to encourage you to be a person that's wise with your words and not to emphasize other people's mistakes. I heard you say it many, many years ago. I think it was from John Maxwell. Uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Oh, so much wisdom in that. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And one of my big takeaways with that also is that most of the time I don't offer wisdom on a situation unless I'm asked. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it may be so obvious I feel like I have to jump in. But a lot of times I've just asked God, you know, if they if I'm supposed to share, let them ask my opinion. And sometimes we just need to point blank ask people if we want part of their wisdom. And to be wise in relationships and if you want to emphasize others' mistakes, uh, you know, wisdom is full of mercy. Wisdom is full of mercy. And I want to encourage you today to be a person that extends mercy. And because we all are going to need it at some point in our life. All right, last but not least, if I'm going to be wise in relationships and relate wisely to others, just to recap real quick, uh, the, the first thing that we will look at to be wise in relationships is if I'm wise, I won't compromise my integrity. Okay, if I'm wise, I won't compromise my integrity. Number two, if I'm wise, I won't antagonize your anger. Number three, if I'm wise, I won't minimize your feelings. Number four, if I'm wise, I won't criticize your suggestions. Number five, if I'm wise, I won't emphasize your mistakes. And last but not least, if I'm wise, I won't disguise my feelings. James chapter 3, verse 17, the very last part of it says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is impartial and sincere. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is impartial and sincere. But here's what I know, friends. Sometimes it doesn't mean we're always going to like that wisdom, even if it is impartial and sincere. And yet sometimes, as I said earlier today, you just got to hear uh, in relationships sometimes to hear that truth in love and be thankful if you've got some people that are willing to do that with you in your life. And, you know, in any criticism, I've found there's always maybe one nugget of truth, nugget of wisdom that I can learn and apply for my life, even if 90% of it's like, no, that's not accurate, that's not right. But there's almost always maybe 10%, a little nugget of wisdom I can take from somebody's uh, suggestion. Uh, could be even, quote, called criticism. And... You know, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20 says, listen to advice and accept discipline, and at the end you'll be counted among the wise. Oh, friends, be good listeners. Accept that truth in love. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 says, you will never succeed in life if you try to hide your sins. You've heard me say this before, but I just know that I know, friends, in my own life and hundreds of others, that with the revealing starts the healing. Say that one more time. With the revealing starts the healing. And so if you've got something in your life that's really affecting relationships and because of a wound you have on the inside, I want to encourage you today to talk to God first and foremost about it. Secondly, a friend or a pastor or make an appointment with a, 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 your pastor or Christian counselor and just let them give you help. Because with the revealing starts the healing, which will help all your relationships. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope is here.